38 special backwards wad cutter test. And you might be thinking, what? But back in the day, reversing a wad cutter, a hollow based wad cutter, was kind of an innovative and cheap way to make a quote unquote hollow point. So what I have here is some Hornady. They are 148 grain hollow base wad cutter bullets. And here's your wad cutter bullet. And oh, they're renowned for their accuracy. They're just a flat front bullet that uh, really cut, cuts a big hole in paper. Also, they're pretty good for defense, but what happens if you just switch it over? You have a hollow base. Well, what if you load that forward as a hollow point? So that's something that used to be done a lot. So what I have here is I have some hollow base wad cutters. I loaded them up a tight group. Um, the hollow base ones I loaded with 3.3 grains. And then the traditional ones here I loaded with 3.5 grains just to try to keep the same velocity, if I can, between the hollow base and the forward facing. Because obviously if you have a hollow base, you're going to need a little more power to catch up that pressure. So I'm going to run through my 2-inch barrel, Taurus 605, and my 4-inch barrel, Taurus 686, to see what kind of performance I get in a ballistic gel test. So I'm going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test as always. I have four layers of denim, followed by three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle, followed by a quarter inch MDF to represent hitting ribs or sternum and to more clear ballistics. We'll try to do a shot with the MDF and without the MDF, depending on if I do you know, both barrel lengths in the gel, we'll have to see what kind of velocity we get because if they're very similar velocity, like I suspect, we might only need to like run the snub nose in the ballistic test. So between the forward facing and the reverse ones, we'll see what kind of difference we get. And I'm gonna fire from probably 25, 10 yards and see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these rounds because they are, like I said, renowned for their very good accuracy. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up, I'm gonna start with the forward facing traditional wad cutter. These are a little bit warmer than off the shelf rounds because you know typically 2.7 to 3, 3 grains is what they're gonna run with pretty much any powder, fast burning powders. So I have 3.5 grains, so let's see what we get in our four inch barrel. 3.5 grains of tight group powder. Nine forty five. Nine thirty three. No read. Nine thirty nine. No read. Nine forty two. All right, pretty good velocity. So let's see what we get with our two inch barrel. See if we really lose any velocity with these forward facing ones. I pulled that one so I didn't get a read. 862. 878. 849. No read. I'll take those readings. I'm kind of pulling those shots. So it's not the ammo, but let's see how our backwards facing wad cutters do. All right, backwards wad cutter, or you could call it a hollow point. A little bit less powder, 3.3 grains. See how this does in our four inch barrel. 898, 885, 847, 883, 852. So this velocity in this four inch is about like the uh, velocity of the, the forward facing in the two inch. So that's probably how I'll just run my ballistic test. I'll run backwards and the four inch forward and the two inch so let's see what this will do 802 818 832 835 806 so a little bit of smoke here because that's to be expected there's a lot of wax on these bullets but so I'm going to hit our ballistic gel block. I'm going to do the backwards facing in the four inch barrel and the forwards facing in the two inch barrel because then we have about the same velocity and we can kind of see if there's a difference there. So let's hit our ballistics gel block and see what we get with these rounds. All right, we'll start with our forward facing wad cutters through the snub so that we can keep the upper 800, 900 feet per second to match the four inch backwards wad cutter. So I'm going to do a shot through our MDF, pull that out and do a shot without the MDF. So here's through our MDF with our traditional wad cutter. Pull that MDF out and do our gut shot now. 
All right, no MDF, traditional wad cutter. Let's go up and take a look. All right, I lost that one, so one more. No MDF. Now let's go take a look. All right, so those rounds pack a punch. With our MDF, we have a penetration of 18 inches even. Here's our MDF. So we can see just a little bit of expansion as it hits that. That kind of mushroomy out the nose a little bit. With no MDF, just our quote unquote gut shot, we got about 21 and a half inches. So that's a little bit of over penetration. So with about the same velocity, let's run some backwards ones now and just see how those will do. All right, backwards wad cutter. See if this will do through the MDF. Now let's try it with no MDF. Just our gut shot now. No MDF. Let's go up and take a look. All right, so we got pretty good performance on that. Um, with our MDF, you know, we can see where it impacts here. And uh, definitely a little bit bigger than the impact on the uh, forward facing. And our penetration is a little bit low. We're at about 11 and a half inches with the MDF. But we have to look at this one because most people will not judge these tests based on MDF hits. And with our plain clear ballistic shot, we got expansion and we got a penetration of 15 and a half inches. That's pretty much textbook for anybody that does ballistic testing. You know, 15 inches is like what they would say is absolutely perfect. So the way these are loaded, they feel about right in the four inch barrel, very low recoil. Um, and they felt good in the two inch barrel as well, but we didn't quite have that, that good of velocity. Um, I know what people are thinking. Run those backwards ones in the two inch, even though the velocity wasn't that great and see how they do because people are saying to themselves, well, if I'm gonna carry that, I'm gonna be carrying it in my snub. So run those backwards ones. So I'll do that real quick. So that first test was a fair test. Now this is a realistic test. So quarter inch MDF, do our snub, see how it does. Now let's try it with no MDF, just our gut shot. All right, no MDF, see how it does. Let's take a look. All right, so that taught us something there. Through our MDF shot, we have a penetration of 12 inches even. So it's pretty similar to the four inch barrel, but I don't really see any expansion. With no MDF, you know, at our low 800 feet per second, we got 17 and a half inches. And it doesn't appear that even backwards we have expansion. So really the way to go with these is to be at about, you know, upper 800 feet per second because the lower 800 feet per second isn't expanding them. But upper 800s, around 900, is expanding them through the MDF and with no MDF. So that's definitely the way to go with these. If you're going to load them for a snub, you'd have to load them a little bit hotter than that uh, 3.3 grains and you'd probably want to shoot them through a 357 because at that point you're you're pressure might be getting kind of up there so i'm gonna fire from 25 yards to start with these and see if there's a difference in accuracy between our forward facing and our backwards wad cutters because i'm really kind of curious about that so let's start shooting at that target now all right 25 yards from the target so i'm going to start up with our forward facing wad cutters in the four inch barrel 
I'll do a reload, and that reload will contain some hollow base, and we'll see if there's a difference. So center mass, 25 yards, traditional wad cutters. Reload looks kind of funny. <laughs> and they reload pretty easily, actually. Hollow base. Oh, I missed one completely somehow. But from the hits I have, it looks like our, our accuracy is about the same. And I'm going to say that that 3.3 grains backwards feels about right because we're reducing a lot of that smoking. Um, but when they're forward with a little bit more powder, there's too much smoke. So. Stub nose, forward facing. All right, a lot of smoke and they, they feel like a plus P for recoil. Try to do a reload here. This loader is not great for this, but backwards one, see how these do. A little more manageable, a little less smoke. So I would go up to 10 yards, but I think that's enough accuracy drills for, for what we need to know. If I were to fire them really close, it'd be pretty easy to, to make all those hits. But what we're definitely seeing here is that both did pretty well. However, if you're gonna bring that velocity down, I didn't test the forward ones in this, but I'm guessing because I don't have enough room in the gel, but I'm guessing that would be about right. We wouldn't really get that over penetration. But what I was really curious about is the backwards ones. And if you load them a little too hot, up to close to, to 900 feet per second with a forward facing, they kind of over penetrate, but upper 800s around 900 is perfect for our backwards ones because I wasn't sure we would get adequate penetration, but we got adequate penetration and expansion. So a backwards loaded, wad cutter at about 900 feet per second or upper 800s that's perfect it turns a really cheap bullet into a pretty decent defensive round and i mean a cheap bullet you know this box of 250 bullets was less than 30 bucks so when you load them up i don't know the cost even to, currently that would be probably somewhere around 10 bucks uh, for our ammo loaded ammo Maybe a little more, but that's still pretty affordable for 50 rounds of defensive ammo. So that's what you get today. Backwards wad cutters, they did pretty well. I'm really surprised. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.